I just come here and just would like to say nothing is changing to the better. Nothing is happening to the better if we don't ask for it loudly, if we really fight for it and if we really ask for binding measures. work as a member of the European Parliament uh, and vice president of the same parliament, uh, you, you've been um, very involved in different issues that pertain to this particular topic, labor issues, uh, the reduction of social and economic inequalities, uh, and of course, as well, women's rights. Um, how how do, you, how do you see the evolution over the last years and, and the impact of, of this work on women's professional lives in our sector? We know you were also very involved with the Lux Prize, uh, the Lux Audience Award. My apologies for the mistake in, <laughs> in the semantics. But so from, from this quite unique standpoint where you were pretty much interested in all the aspects of the issue, how do you think things can go? So an excellent good morning to all of you, to everybody who's already here at this time after having the first coffee in the morning. So uh, uh, great to start with uh, really an issue. I think that's really worth that we speak loudly about it and that we really uh, deal with it more or less all over the Cannes Festival. Uh, I just come here and just would like to say nothing is changing to the better. Nothing is happening to the better if we don't ask for it loudly, if we really fight for it, and if we really ask for binding measures. So nothing is happening. Just uh, be nice and, 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 and picking the issue, we have to dig deeper. And there, uh, I just, I mean, of course, a lot has been done concerning the uh, working conditions, but the first thing is always to make visible what is not working. And too much has been pushed under the right carpet all over the decades, so it's good when so many people in the sector, in all areas, from actors, directors, from those dealing uh, with the technical issues, so from everywhere, just simply pointing the finger in the wound and saying, hey, hey here are not enough women, or for example, or if all those being employed employed, the, the working hours are not respected uh, properly. Of course, we're talking about the creative sector. And all these issues from harassment, violence to, uh, of course, also pay, uh, are not uh, tackled loudly. So that's the first thing, making transparent what's not working. And that's what we did also in the European uh, Union in the last years with legislative uh, files. I think we'll talk about that later, so from work-life balance to pay to quota, which is very important. And the next thing is, when you just find out what's not working uh, properly, really to do something with binding measures. So I'm a big fan of this, because when you just say things are done voluntarily, nothing will change to the better. And I think that's the, the basis. And then to go for change of burden of proof, uh, really sanctioning, and think also of public procurement, because you can push also the, even the working conditions to the better when you just avoid pink washing and all uh, these measures. But maybe we come to that at a later stage. Claude, vous, vous travaillez comme directeur de la photographie depuis bah voilà, le début de votre carrière, si je comprends bien. Oui, tout à fait. Et vous avez, depuis une vingtaine d'années, vécu la réalité d'une femme au travail voilà, dans ce contexte-là. Vous êtes aussi très engagée dans des actions collectives, si je, je comprends bien, euh, qui, que ce soit à travers euh, euh, le, le syndicat euh, SPIAC CGT ou le collectif euh, de femmes derrière la caméra FALC. Donc peut-être oui. vous pouvez nous en dire un petit peu plus. Comment vous voyez le, les progrès qui ont été faits autour de cette question euh, pour les femmes euh, derrière la caméra ces, ces dernières bah. années on peut dire d'un certain côté que ça avance, puisqu'il y a plus de filles dans les écoles techniques de cinéma. Par contre, là où ça n'avance pas, c'est du côté des chefs de poste. C'est-à-dire qu'il y a le cinéma, maintenant, est plein d'assistantes caméras, ce qui n'était pas... Moi, quand j'ai commencé, on était très peu. Donc, il y en a beaucoup. Mais la question, c'est de franchir la marche. Parce que la réticence euh, des productions reste. La réticence des réalisateurs reste. Donc, comme assistante, on est parfaite, parce que, comme beaucoup de femmes, quand on fait un métier, on le fait à fond, parce qu'on sait que si on ne le fait pas à fond, ça va être très difficile. Donc, euh, les assistantes sont très performantes et très demandées. Mais quand il s'agit de passer au moment où on va être vraiment chef d'équipe, 
c'est plus dur visiblement puisqu'on n'est que 10%. Voilà. La, la, euh, la deuxième chose dont je, je veux parler, c'est que quand on, a, quand on fait partie de, des, des femmes qui sont chefs opératrices, la, le deuxième problème qui se pose à nous, c'est que très souvent, on est euh, relégué, enfin, je ne sais pas comment, euh, oui, un petit peu relégué, euh, aux films, sur les films pas très bien produits. C'est-à-dire que si vous prenez tous les films en France qui existent euh, avec des financements réduits, il y a une majorité de femmes écrasantes dans les chefs de poste. I think we should also have a highlight. It was also mentioned, of course, like better practices and and look at safety at work, mm -hmm. from mental well-being to burnout to how to shoot intimate scenes to sexual harassment and and violence. So I think it's definitely something that needs to be highlighted and to again, to have discussions and find the best practices, which again, they need to be tailored to, to different regions. Again, because maybe in, in smaller countries, I, I will also refer going back to, to my country and to Eastern Europe, we don't have unions, even like, for example, for the actors, they, if we go back to gender pay gap, We don't have agents, so it's it's more and more difficult to for actresses to negotiate for themselves. So what we're doing, we're also trying like to to make the producers a bit more responsible when it comes to that, as they don't have like allies and other people uh, supporting them uh, in this. Um, then also, I think we 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 should highlight maybe more women. Um, That the barriers faced by women coming from underrepresented uh, groups, communities, when we should we should analyze uh, more uh, this when it comes to women of color, um, LGBTQI, um, older women, uh, women with disabilities, they are facing extra, let's say, <laughs> even more challenges than um, than women. Uh, In, so for them, uh, I think it's uh, an added <laughs> challenge to make it out in this uh, in in this industry. Je pense que c'est vrai pour euh, toutes les femmes qui travaillent dans le cinéma. Il euh, y a quelque chose qui n'avance pas du tout, c'est la question de la maternité. C'est-à-dire nous, on a des métiers qui nous amènent à partir euh, loin, longtemps, etc. Et en fait, on, on s'aperçoit. Bon là, je, on dirait que je suis une spécialiste des chiffres, pas du tout, mais bon, on s'aperçoit. On s'aperçoit, on s'aperçoit que, que, en fin de compte, il y a énormément de femmes après 35 ans qui quittent nos métiers, qui sont plus en tournage, même si, euh, même si elles sont tout à fait, euh, euh, comment dire, euh, déjà expérimentées et très bonnes, etc. Elles s'arrêtent quand elles ont un enfant, parce que rien n'est prévu pour ça, absolument rien. L'enfant reste un, une question privée. Ah, tu veux un enfant Bon, maintenant, tu te débrouilles avec un secteur qui est absolument euh, euh, incompétent à nous aider. C'est un, un très grave problème, hein, parce que, bah, en fait, 35 ans, c'est juste l'âge où la, toute ta carrière démarre. Et d'imaginer qu'en 2023, en fait, tu es, es amené à choisir quand tu es technicienne parce que les techniciennes, nous, on n'est pas à la maison, on est tout le temps ailleurs. Hein. Il faut, tu dois choisir entre faire des enfants ou avancer dans ta carrière. Ça reste quand même quelque chose de totalement scandaleux, dont la majeure partie des gens euh, soit ne connaissent pas le problème, soit n'ont pas du tout envie de le considérer. When we are thinking of the film industry and everything around, all all the jobs from the from the artists to uh, the technicians, from everybody who is in the whole procedure, sometimes. Of course, people outside think, okay, everything is driven by passion, by love for the profession. And of course, that's the case. But in the end of the day, you should pay your rent and you should go home in the evening and pick up your kid who is somewhere in the crèche. And, and so somehow simply to have a normal life. And therefore, it has to do a lot with application of all those rules dealing with labor. And I think it's good and it's high time that it's also applied and dealt with and outspoken in the whole film industry and this should be done even louder and said more because that goes very well together art and uh, passion and of course at the other end, uh, 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 at the other side the whole picture of having a good uh, well-paid life <laughs>